Okay, we are looking at section 4.3, congruent triangles. And this picture doesn't even look like it has triangles in it, but if you look at the support beams, um, here's your bridge. There's kind of the arch there, but these form triangles. This one's there. Triangle, triangle, triangle. And even this, it looks all curvy, and that must be quite the roller coaster. I don't even know if this is for real, but these are probably triangular shaped support beams. All right, we're going to start off with CPCTC. That's what we, we don't say definition of your triangle, blah, 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 all the time. We say CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This is in the book, so you don't have to write this down, but this would be good. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles. are congruent. Okay, corresponding means like your triangle has different sides, it has different angles. All, if your triangles are going to be congruent, then all these different parts will also be congruent. What is under this page? What could be so exciting? So there are six parts to congruent triangles. Alright, there is, we're going to say these triangles are congruent. AC is congruent to DF. We could say segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And then we could go and say segment FE, oh, bad drawing of line, is congruent to segment CB. But that's only three parts. There's actually six parts to my triangle. And so we have to remind ourselves that we have an angle right here that would be congruent to this angle over here. We have an angle down here that's congruent to an angle down here. And we have another angle that's congruent to the third angle over here. So when you, when you hear CPCTC, you have to think there are six parts of that triangle and it's congruent to the six parts of the other triangle. Three sides, three angles. Okay, congruency segment or statement. So you're going to get this question a lot and a lot of kids just like don't even know what the question is. That means you get a statement about what's congruent here. So in this picture up above, what's congruent is triangle ABC to triangle. And here's the thing, you can't just slop down three letters. You have to make sure they match. So angle A, we've already discussed, was congruent with angle D. So I have to put D in the first instance of the triangle. D, angle B, corresponds to angle E, so I have E next, so B goes with E, and then C goes with, or corresponds to F, so I put F right here, okay? So okay, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, that is a congruency statement. Name the congruent angles and the sides of the pair of congruent triangles. Now, you can, and you are free to, go ahead and draw out the triangle itself. But I usually go by location. So I would say A matches with Q. So I will say angle A is congruent to angle Q. If you need to draw out the triangle to see that, then go ahead. I would also say angle B is congruent to angle X. Okay, and then angle C would be congruent to angle R. But recall, I said there were six parts. I've only listed three. So I've listed all my angles are congruent. Now you list all my sides that are congruent. So segment AB would be congruent to, I'm taking the first two letters, so the two letters over here would be QX. Okay, generally, you know, you could draw this out, but most of us aren't going to take the time to do that. Segment BC is congruent to segment XR, okay, because I've taken these two letters and these two letters. And what's left? Actually, segment AC. We haven't talked about a segment AC. That would correspond to segment QR in the other triangle. So now you have your six parts of your triangle, CPCTC. All your parts are congruent. 
then we have congruent triangles. So there's going to be kind of a, an example here. A tower's roof is composed of congruent triangles all converging toward a point at the top. Name the corresponding congruent angles and sides of triangle. H, I, J, so they go from H to I back down to J, and then triangle L, I, K. Okay, so basically you can't just say, hey, some of these angles are congruent. There are specific ones that are congruent to specific ones. So, and this is going to be kind of like the previous question. So we're going to take the angles. Angle H is congruent to angle L. So I'm going to kind of write that in there so you can see. Angle H, angle L. Angle I is congruent to angle I. Well, that's kind of weird. Angle I is congruent to angle I. Okay, and angle J is congruent to angle K. So I've got my J over here with my K over here. Okay, and then I have to take my side lengths. So I have uh, segments. Segment HI is congruent to segment LI. And please do, I really want you to try to do the same. For your HI, go LI. Try not to do IL. Right? H. I, and then I have segment JI would be congruent to segment KI. I'm not putting my congruency markings in there. And then segment HJ is congruent to this segment right here, but because I start with H over here, it would be lovely if you would start with L over here. Okay, so there are my six parts. And, all right. I did skip another one on purpose. Congruency transformations. If you have a transformation, this is not a statement, transformation, the size and the shape of your triangle do not change. Okay, so here's your first kind of a transformation. It's a translation. Basically, you just slide. Oh, look at that. I'm sliding all over. That's a translation. 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 I do kind of, I'm going to let you use both words. Either one is fine. I'll have both choices on your quizzes and tests to pick from. However, we should probably um, work towards or translation rather than slide. But I think if we can just get at least the idea there, we're going to be good. So there's a slide. There's a transformation. There's a transformation. Once these are moved off the original, they oftentimes put like a prime here. They, they would, that's one that I didn't write. Here we go. C prime. A prime, B prime. Okay, they would move it off and then you would say, basically these are my corresponding angles, they're going to be congruent, but it's not quite the same angle because this is angle C right here, this is angle C prime. Okay, rotation. Um, so if you get this, you would take and you could basically, and this is a different kind of rotation, I can't show it great on the board, it would kind of like turn like this, but it also would turn this way. And I don't have an actual, oops, an actual application that does that for me. So it would kind of be doing this, picking it up and moving it. Okay, and that would be called a rotation. And we know enough about a rotation, I think, that we can put it together. It would be like if you could pick this up on a piece of paper and then move it, which may have been, may have been the better way to show this one. And then reflection. This is your third congruency transformation. You can reflect or flip something. And basically it looks, and there's lots of different ways to flip something. There's one way. And of course this would end up being C prime. This would be a B prime. And this would be your A prime. But it's reflected. And you can reflect it um, another way as well. You could do, yeah. You can't hardly see it because it went off the paper, but that's another kind of reflection. So we do have reflections are another type of congruency transformation. So those are your three. So if we had to look at a picture, what I would do is I would look at this and say R has to get over here to R prime, T has to get over here to T prime, and S has to come down to S prime. This is a rotation. I know it's hard to show um, this way, but I think if T is kind of rotating down here, S is rotating down here, and R is rotating around this way. So if you could just pick this up and turn it this way and land over here, so this would be our rotation. Okay? This A goes over here. C ends up, whoops, oh yeah, C ends up going, I made a mistake on my thing. 
This should be C prime, and this should be B prime. Okay, so C ends up going way over here, and B comes over here. That would be like if I folded the paper right down the middle. So this is called a reflection. All right, and on this case, we should be able to just go, woo, move it down here. That would be your slide or translation. Okay, um, here's a long problem. The vertices of triangle ABC are given. I'm not going to read those all off. And then they also have the vertices of uh, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And they give you the values of that. Use the distance formula uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, to verify that the corresponding sides are congruent. Okay, and then it also says name the transformation uh, that's happening here. And that means I either have rotation, reflection, or... Um, Translation. And if you can see here, if I were to move this one, oh goodness, I want to move this. There we go. It's not a slide. And if I were to reflect, this A would come over here, B would end up over here, C would end up down here. So it's not a reflection, so it has to be a rotation. And it's just so difficult to show rotation on here. So let's go back to the original part of the problem. Use a distance formula to verify that the corresponding sides are congruent. I don't know that I'm going to work all the way through this. I'm not going to give you very many of these, like one or two tops, just because it's so, so involving. But if you have um, A, B, so I need to find the distance from A to B. Um, you can use, if you have the graph in front of you, you can use Pythagorean theorem, which might actually work faster with the graph, or you need to go back to your distance formula. So A, B, I'm going to take my X values, Z, minus negative 5, square it, and then I'm going to have th um, 3 minus 5, and square that. Okay, so that I have 5 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is equal to 25 plus 4, which is the square root of 29. So basically, AB over here is square root 29. That's the length of that side. Okay, so I need to compare that to A prime, B prime. So I come up here, here's A prime, B prime. And I'm going to verify this. I'm going to take the distance. I've got negative 3 minus negative 5. So I'm going to square that. And then I take 0 minus 5, square that. Okay, so now I have, this is 2 squared. And then I have negative 5 squared. So, by the way, this is two separate things. 2 squared is 4, negative 5 squared is 25, and now I have squared of 29. So basically this and this are the same, so this side is congruent to this side right here because they both have side lengths of square of 29. Okay, like I said, I'm going to be nice to you and not make you do lots and lots of these kinds of problems for maybe one or two, but that's how you verify. And I would need to go on, it's not enough, just because I'm stopping here, um, but you would need to show me that BC is congruent to B prime C prime, and segment AC is congruent to segment AC. So you'd have to do the distance formula four more times. And that's the end.